awesome opportunity. I pray that God will continue to bless and promote him in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto us. I'd like you to pray in your seated position. The Bible, he sent a word unto Jacob and it alighted upon Israel. Just one word is what you require to turn that situation around. Ask him this morning, Lord, that word that is meant for me, send it unto me this morning. Lift up your voice in your seated position and pray that prayer. Lord, that word that is meant for me, send it on, to my, send it on my way this morning. The word that will lead me to my testimony, that will lead me to my next level. Send that word my way, Jesus. Send that word my way, O oh God. I am expectant. My heart is set. Lord, send your word my way and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. The prophetic theme for the month is thanksgiving. Preserves, multiplies, and perfects our blessings. And the teaching series we have been looking at since the beginning of this month is understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. It is your understanding that determines what becomes of you in the kingdom of God. What you understand is what you will enjoy. The book of Psalm chapter 82 and verse 5. Psalm 82 verse 5, the Bible says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. He said in verse 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But look at verse, verse 7. He said, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of that princes. Somebody say, God forbid. Because they don't know. They don't know what belongs to them. They don't know the step to take. So they continue to suffer like men. So what you don't know cannot benefit you. But I trust God to give every one of us a deep understanding of his word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. Wonders are loaded in thanksgiving. They are loaded in thanksgiving. When we engage in genuine thanksgiving, it usually results into praise. Genuine thanksgiving Result into praise. And when praise happens, the presence of God comes down. And when you secure the presence of God around you, every opposition, they are all silenced. Your turnaround begins to take place. God begins to turn you around, leave, take you from one level of testimony, from one level of blessing to the other. That is why thanksgiving is a vital force for everyone that desired a next level turnaround. If turnaround is what you desire, then thanksgiving must be your lifestyle. Thanksgiving must be your way of life. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing that should come out of your mouth is, Father, Thank you. Praise the Lord. In the book of Psalm 114, from verse 1 to 7. So when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. They kept praising God and then the sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. Every opposition kept giving way for them. Because of the presence of God in their midst, beginning from this moment, no mountain will be able to stand before you any longer. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. 
Now, what are we thanking God for? What are we thanking God for? Because it is not enough to give him thanks. You must know why you are thanking him. We are thanking God, among other things, in anticipation of perfection of all that concerns us. For perfection of all the things that concerns us. Psalm 138, verse 8. Psalm 138, verse 8. He said, the Lord will perfect that which concerned me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hand. The Lord will perfect everything, everything that concerns me. Hmm. Maybe in my health, in my business, in my family, in my career, the Sami was saying that I am too sure it will perfect everything that concerns me. So, as a result of that, he gives God thanks. So, as children of God, we need to keep thanking God in anticipation of doing what he has promised us. In anticipation that he will bring to pass, he will make good his promises in our lives. Just like Abraham in the book of Romans. He had received the promise of God. He knew God would fulfill his word. So he kept giving God thanks. He didn't allow the situation at hand to distract him. He kept blessing God. He kept glorifying God. Knowing that God will make good his promise. Knowing that God will perfect his blessing. And God showed up. I see God showing forth on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. If that is for you, let your amen be the loudest. Now, what are the benefits of thanksgiving? Because when we do the will of God, we are set to receive the promise. What are the benefits that follows Thanks givers. Number one, thanksgiving secures God's blessings upon our lives. Thanksgiving secures God's blessings upon our lives. Jeremiah chapter 13 from verse 15 to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 13, from verse 15 to verse 17. Hear ye and give here. Be not proud. For the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord God. Give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, he turned it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Verse 17. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride and my eye shall weep so and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. Anytime you refuse to give God thanks, you forget his benefit in your life. You are bound to lose those blessings. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because when you refuse to give God thanks, he withdraws his hand. And when God withdraws his hand, you are sure. You can be sure the devil will take advantage and rush in. God will not withdraw his life his hand from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So for the benefits we are enjoying to be preserved, we quickly give the Lord thanks and we continue to give him thanks. 
the presiding bishop said, why God will continue, why he knows that God will continue to bless this ministry is because we will continue to give him thanks. <clears throat> because we won't stop giving him thanks. And year after year, we are seeing new things, new blessing, greater blessing in this commission because of ceaseless thanksgiving. That is how the blessing of God will not cease in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the store. Verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God he is my strength. And he will make my feet like hands feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. It may look as if things are not working. But keep giving God thanks. The Bible says, In all things, give him thanks. In all things, in all situation, in all condition. Keep giving him thanks. Definitely it will turn things around for you. Praise the Lord. Look at Joseph. From his father's house where he was, you know, uh, it was the special, let me use that language, the special one to his father. He was the only one that has the you know, coat of many colors. And his Brethren say this one will take care of him. And lo and behold, he was sold into slavery. Yet he kept thanking God. How do we know that he kept thanking God? Because the presence of God was with him. He carried the presence of God even in slavery. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. If you Stop thanking God. You lose the presence of God. And because of the presence of God that he carried, God blessed the house of Potiphar, his master. So, in every situation, you find yourself, we find ourselves at time, we have the opportunity to give God thanks. Because when you have life, you have everything. It's just a matter of time. Doing the right thing. God will turn things around for your favor. Praise the Lord. When you give God thanks for the gift of life, when you sincerely appreciate God for life, He will make, you know, everything you need to be available for you. Because when a man loses his life, everything is over. For you to be in your right mind, you need to give God thanks. Because the moment a man loses his mind, nobody mind him. He doesn't know what, whether he has an account or not. Before you know it, he's on the street, walking naked. He can travel from here to anywhere on foot. He has lost his mind. And nobody, you know, take cognizance of him. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So there is need to keep giving God thanks for its faithfulness. Every one of us owe God thanks. We owe him thanks. He owe us nothing. Because the Bible says, he daily loads us with benefit. We enjoy loads upon loads of benefit today. Every day. For instance, you are in church now. You were not carried into church this morning. You walk into this church by yourself. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are some people lying on the hospital bed, struggling for their life. Some are even using oxygen. Some are oxygen as we are talking right now. But that is not your portion. God deserves all the glory. <laughs> That is why we owe him thanks. There are many things we are enjoying from God. You can imagine you are taking oxygen free of charge. You know how much uh, one, 
one second of a phone is. You can imagine if we are paying for the oxygen per second, the way we pay per second for a making call. You know how much we are going to be paying in 24 hours. And somebody will say God is not doing anything. That God has not done anything for him or for her. Meanwhile, you are enjoying free oxygen that some people are paying for. They are in the hospital. You are in the church now. You are not carrying machine that is supporting your system. Praise the Lord. Meanwhile, some people are walking about with machine to support their health. But you are not being supported by any human effort. One more time, raise up your right hand and say, Father, thank you. <laughs> Joseph was there enjoying the presence of God, even as a slave. And before you know it, the, the devil was the angry and pushed him into, so he organized his way into the prison. Yet, even as a prisoner, he kept thanking God. If you won't stop thanking God, God won't stop blessing you. He won't stop taking you to the next level if you will not stop thanking him. And before you know it, from prison in a strange country, not his, not his country of nativity, from a prisoner, a prisoner in a strange country, he found himself in the palace. That is how God will change your level supernaturally. Yeah. One more time, raise up your right hand and say, Father, thank you. So we thank God to secure God's blessings upon our life. When you thank him, his blessing in your life is supernaturally preserved. Amen. Amen. What are the benefits of thanksgiving number two? It is the key to multiplication of our blessings. Thanksgiving is the key that multiplies our blessings. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And then God said I will multiply them and they shall not be few. And I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Thanksgiving is the key. What is that thing that you are believing God for to increase? You are believing God for the expansion of your business. Expansion of your career. You are believing God for more or new clients. Give God thanks for the one you have. Give God thanks for that job. Then your promotion will come. Give God, for, give God thanks for that place where you are. It will open a new door for you. Praise the Lord. Until you give God thanks, you don't know the value of that which is in your hand. You don't know what it can, it can transform what he has given unto you to become. With five loaves and two fishes. A boy's lunch. One small boy's lunch. The fish are not a, two, a big, big one. I was listening to uh, Pastor David Oedepo Jr. He said they are like sardine. Sardine fish. Not sardine full uh, can. One, one. Just two. Two fish. And one small five loaves. Flat, flat one like this. The Hebrews own. And when he received it, he said, Father, thank you. And that was it. It kept multiplying. It kept multiplying. Until 5,000 men, apart from children and women, ate until they were tired. <laughs> Our presiding bishop said, when some people saw the food, they said, eh, see food, I will eat myself to tire today. He said, some ate, some will eat and go to the toilet and go and eat themselves and come back again to come and resume. But despite eating, 12 baskets were still remaining. That is how God will make you to have leftover in the name of Jesus. 
But it takes thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is what is required. To make that thing in your hand to multiply. Give God thanks for it. If you thank God for where you are, it takes you to the next level. Praise the Lord. It takes you to the next level. Multiplication answers to thanksgiving. You don't know how far, how high that blessing can go until you give God thanks. Until you give God thanks. Our appreciation is what provokes supernatural multiplication. Our appreciation to God, your appreciation to God, my appreciation to God is what provokes supernatural multiplication. You will not lose your blessings in the name of Jesus. Now quickly, today being our next level, we'll be looking at keys to next level. And one more thing before we go into that. You don't assume thanksgiving. You practicalize it. You demonstrate it. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Just as a student cannot assume he has written an exam. <laughs> oh, yes, I just assume I've, re I've written the exam. By next session, I'm going to the next class. He must sit and they all and answer the question. Submit it, they will mark it, they will say, okay. <laughs> the same way you must demonstrate your gratitude to God by raising your voice and giving thanks practically. And that as a way of life, then you continue to see the hand of God. The last time you fail will be the last time you will ever fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Keys to next level. Number one, by redemption, we have been empowered for a life of continuous progress. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. By redemption, we have been empowered for a life of continuous progress, a life of advancement. He said, but the part of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You are the just. Christ has justified you. The, the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ has made you the just. As, as long as you have accepted him into your life as your Lord and Savior. So you are supposed, you are qualified, you are a candidate for next level promotion. From time to time. Keep scaling new height. That is the plan of God for your life. But we must possess next level mentality to realize this. Anyone that is always thinking failure, nobody can make him to pass. Anyone that is always seeing see himself sick, <laughs> no matter the, the kind of prayer or the doctor that attempts to him or her, he will always be falling sick. Whatever you see is what becomes of you. What you believe is what will happen to you. So we must possess next level mentality. I am not and I can't be stagnated. I am a child of God. God cannot be stagnated. So I cannot be stagnated. I must continue to move forward. Because salvation forbids stagnation. You must carry that mentality. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Nobody will carry that mentality for you. Years ago, I was going to Asaba. I boarded uh, his uh, a government uh, transportation bus. And inside the vehicle, two people in the bus, two people were behind, and one was lamenting. He said, I've graduated for the past 10 years. I've graduated the, from the university for the past 10 years, but I can't get a job. And he answered the question, he said, why? Because I don't have anybody in government. I don't know any commissioner. 
I don't know the governor. I don't know any permanent secretary. I don't know this and that. I shook my head for him. Why? He believes until he has somebody at the top there. That is when we'll be able to get job. As a man thinks in his heart. So is he. And that is the reason why he remained like that. Until you see the next level, you can't get there. But I see God revealing it unto you in the name of Jesus. Nobody will help you to see it. You see it by yourself. You consciously see it. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15. God called Abraham after Lot has departed from me. He said, come, look, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For whatever you see, that is what we, you will get. Whatever you see, that is what you will get. What are you seeing? Are you seeing promotion? Are you seeing a wonderful home? Are you seeing a bright future? What you see is what you get. So as a child of God, if you desire next level turnaround, begin to see it. Consciously sit down and begin to see it. See it through the eyes of the scripture. And God will make, make it to come to pass. Praise the Lord. If you want to experience continual change of level, what are we to do? Number one, we must continue to walk in line with the word of God. You must continue to align yourself with the word of God. Whatsoever the word say you should do, align yourself with it. At that marriage in Galilee, wine was exhausted. Shame was imminent. Running helter and skelter. The mother of Jesus told, told him they need wine. He said, what is, that? what is my own with that? I'm just paraphrasing. But he turned, she turned to the servant and told them, whatsoever he asks you to do, do it. That is where next level turnaround is. Whatsoever he asks you to do, do it. That is the word of God. And they listened to her. They waited on him. And he told them, go and fill the water pots with water. What did they need? They needed wine. He said, go and fill the water pot with water. And after they pour it, filled it to the brim, he didn't pray on it. He said, go and take from where you pour water and take it to the uh, to the high table. Start serving from the high table, not from behind. When you will think that in case uh, something happens, you will quickly retrieve before. <laughs> Say, go and start. And they obey the instruction. They align themselves with biblical instruction. And turnaround was birthed. That's how your own turnaround will come quickly in the name of Jesus. So we must continue to walk in line with the word of God. If turn around is what we desire. James chapter 1 verse 22. James chapter 1 verse 22. He said, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Be ye doer of the word of God. It is not enough to hear. Doing is what we make the testimony to come. You will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. What is the next key to experiencing supernatural turnaround? We must continue to engage with divine instruction. Just as we have had. Engage with it. You hear it, put it into practice. You hear it, put it into practice. I had a testimony of a man. He desired next level turnaround. The salary was meager, very small, barely managing with it. Specifically, it was 10,000 error. 
those days. And as a married man, grossly inadequate, he asked God, God, what do I do to enter the next level? And in a service like this, he had, she, he had the testimony of a woman. I was believing God for a promotion. The promotion was not coming, you know, quick enough. So, I decided to be paying the tithe of the salary I will be receiving when the promotion is effected. I started paying the tithe ahead. And the promotion was effected almost immediately. And this man picked that testimony and went home and sat down. My own situation is almost like this one. I desire change of level. Increase in salary. What do I, what do, I do? I've had now. He now sat down. And decided to create his own and fix the salary he wanted by himself. And as started paying the tithe. He paid the tithe for the first time. From the salary that was not enough, he paid the tithe of what he wanted. That was it, the heaven opened. Supernaturally, he was called from somewhere. Come and attend this interview. At the end of it, he was given the job. You know when they paid him a salary, it was... The tithe that they have started paying. If that clap is for Jesus, make it bigger. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We must continue to engage with divine instruction. What is the next key to experiencing continuous change of level? We must continue to serve God and the interests of of his kingdom. When the things of God concerns you, your own thing will concern him. When you show I don't care attitude to his own thing, then the same thing. He will show I don't care attitude to your own. He said when I call, you refuse to answer. When you call, I will refuse to answer as well. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. You want change, continuous change of level? Continue to advance his kingdom. Continue to bring soul to his kingdom. Continue to advance his kingdom even on the prayer altar. Not only in the church. Have a particular time. You pray for the advancement of, of the kingdom of God on your own. The time that you won't miss. Have budget for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And you see God by himself with his hand changing your level from time to time. Praise the Lord. But all these things cannot be done in the energy of the flesh. You can't do it on your own except you are a child of God. The things of God the things of the kingdom of God cannot be done in the energy of human flesh. That's why <laughs> Apostle Paul said, who will deliver me from this flesh? What I want to do, I discover I can't do them. What I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. You need to be in his camp. You need to be on the side of God before you can do these things. So, if you want to give God thanks, if you want to experience continuous change of level, you need to give your life to Christ if you have not done so. You need to give your life to Christ and, and keep following him and keep serving him. In case you, are, you have given your life to Christ before, but you know you are falling away from him. You have compromised. You have stepped back into sin. You need to rededicate your life to Christ. And before you know, everything will begin to fall in line for you. Praise the Lord. So if you are here this morning in this second service, you have not given your life to Christ. God wants to start a new thing in your life. You have not given your life to Christ. You need to do it right now. Rise upon your feet with me. If you know you have not surrendered your life to Christ, an opportunity is given unto you this morning. Don't let it pass you by. You have not surrendered your life to Christ. Wherever you are seated, please rise upon your feet. God bless you. Rise upon your feet. Church, are you clapping for Jesus? Rise upon your feet and begin to come to the altar. Begin to come to Jesus on the altar here. Don't wait for another person. Just begin to come quickly. 
Come quickly, church, clap better for Jesus. And probably you have given your life to Christ sometimes before. But you know you have backslided. You have been committing sin. You have compromised. You are not sure if Christ comes today whether you will make heaven. Rise upon your feet and come and rededicate your life to Christ. Church, are you still clapping for Jesus? Rise upon your feet. Run to him this morning. His arm is widespread expecting to, re to receive you. Like that prodigal son. Return back to Jesus this morning. Return back unto him. Somebody is still there. Don't allow the devil to keep you down on that seat. The devil wants to destroy you. Don't agree with him. Don't cooperate with the devil. Now be, rise upon your feet. Begin to come to this altar. Somebody is still coming. Come quickly. Come faster. As the congregation put their hands together for Jesus. You are still coming. Come faster. Come quickly. Run to him this morning. He will rescue you. He will save you. Somebody is still coming from that, this angle. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is waiting for you. Come faster. If you are coming, come quickly. We want to pray. Those of us that are in the front of the altar this morning, please bow your head and put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. Please have mercy on me. Forgive me my sin. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the cross of Calvary. And on the third day. You rose. For my justification. From today. I accept you into my life as my Lord and I, as my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I commit this, your precious ones, unto you. I pray that you continue to bless them. Release that grace upon them, the grace to continue to follow you. From today, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You will not go back into sin. In the name of Jesus, I decree the release of the blessing of God upon your life. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations. This new week, you are changing levels. In the name of Jesus, this new week is your week of promotion. It's your week of new testimony. God will be giving you a new breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, as you go forth this morning, you are covered with the blood of Jesus. Every evil plot against you will return back on your enemies. In the name of Jesus, your family, your wife, your children, your property, they are all covered with the blood of Jesus. No loss around you. No accident in your family. All through this new month that is coming and beyond, you will not lose any member of your family. You will not bury anyone in your home. In the name of Jesus, as you arrive your place of work tomorrow, your shop, your business place, God is giving you a new level of blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That promotion that you are believing God for, before this new week is over, the letter is handed over to you. Everyone hindering your advancement, God will expose them and put them to shame. In the name of Jesus, every area of struggle in your life, God is taking over. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, anyone that will not allow you to rest, God will put them to rest. God will lay them to rest. Everyone that will not allow your family to rest, God will lay them to rest. In the name of Jesus, wherever they may be, in the village, in your compound, in your place of work. Anyone that says you will not have rest, God will lay them to rest. In the name of Jesus, anyone that dig any evil pit for you, any grave for you, that prepare a coffin for you, those your enemy, every one of them will be buried into those pits in the name of Jesus. They will be buried into those coffins in the name of Jesus. Concerning you, you are moving forward. You are going higher. The blessing of the Lord is your portion. 
sickness is terminated in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus, that sickness will not return back with you to your house. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are free. This new week is your week of miracle. It's your week of testimony. So shall it be. All our children, one more time, they are all blessed. They will become great. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let that amen be the loudest.